uh, nice girls on that uh, cheerleading squad. Real nice students and uh, uh, heck of a cheerleader too. I know I couldn't do some of those moods. I, I, I think I'd be afraid of just uh, falling or maybe hitting my head on the ceiling. <laughs> they'd have to have some really- I think you should be afraid of hitting your head on the ceiling just standing up. They, they have, they'd have to have some really small cheerleaders to throw me up in the air, <laughs> you know what I mean? Small but squatty and strong. That's right, and catch the body coming down. Fourth quarter action now for Nishamity. They're looking to climb the ladder and back into this game. And Lovelace controls the ball for them. Passes to Bihar. Bihar has been quiet tonight. He only has four points and a personal foul. And now he's going to try a three-pointer. It's short. Thomas with a rebound. Jump ball belongs to Norristown. Well, Bihar continues in his funk. He and Lovelace afflicted with uh, something that's affecting their shot tonight. Maybe it's something they ate. It's Weldon. Oh, Wiggins tries to get the ball in. Weldon calling for the ball, but they're going to have to call a timeout. Testament to the Norristown defense. 35 points on the board after three quarters for a Nishamini team that really has the ability to put up 70 points on any given night between Bihar, Lovelace, Kaz Thomas, and Lippincott. That's right. They're very, very far away from that 70-point total. They yep. have to double it right now, and I don't see that happening. It will be a success for this team if they can uh, approach 50. And that does not look like it'll be enough to uh, overcome this Norristown team who has, even though it's been a little bit of a battle back and forth and seesawed somewhat, they really have maintained control of the momentum of the game. Yeah, Norristown is, has really been in control. They've never been behind in this game. They've had the lead from the start. There was a couple ties there in the first, or the first half, but nothing really for Norristown to worry about. Coming out on the court, it's going to be Wiggins, Allen, Green, Moore, and Brad Weldon. And Weldon is way down underneath the basket, sort of cherry picking. He thought he was going to try to get away with something here, but it's a good outlet pass, though. It looks like McGee set up some kind of inbounds pass against this, this uh, press de uh, defense as Moore gets the ball and head to Allen. Now it's Allen and Weldon. Weldon on the baseline, scores for Norristown. That's Brad Six. The danger of pressing against Norristown is the fact that it takes him about a blink of an eye to get the ball down into the offensive side of the court, and then you're uh, automatically in a uh, disadvantaged situation. That's right. Thomas' shot goes off, and, and there's so many dangerous weapons on the court that any, any one of them can make it on a fast break as we have it a chance to see Wiggins now. Wiggins, this is the Marcus Green, and Wiggins didn't even touch. Antoine Lovelace. Lovelace was looking for the charge there, and Wiggins skied all the way around and over him. It's Weldon now with the ball, number 41, passes to Eddie Moore. Lippincott comes out to meet him. There's Wiggins in the paint, no good. Rebound Cass Thomas right off to Matt Puma. Well, Wiggins just screwed up Ed Moore's uh, chance there at an assist. That was a nice job in recognition of Ed Moore. Lovelace. See Wiggins wide open. Sorry, Lovelace, nothing there. And ooh, there's a trip and good sportsmanship there by Cass Thomas as he picks Maurice Allen up off the court. Allen went down hard, but he gets right back up. I don't know, sometimes, John, sometimes these guys don't realize where they are. They're, they're pulling their shirt out, pulling their pants up right on the, right on the court as uh, hundreds of fans look on. Sort of like that Steve Lyons from the Chicago White Sox who uh, stood on first base and tried to get the dust out of his pants, not realizing that 50,000 people are staring at him. Here's Weldon with a shot from Marcus Green, and Green gets the assist. Weldon gets the two points. That is a clinic textbook job on uh, breaking that press right there. And it didn't even look like it was an effort there. Kenzer with a three-point attempt. It's no good. There's going to be a foul away from the ball. And now will be the next eagle to uh, crack in double figures. He's got eight, four of which uh, came in this quarter. Bihar charged with another foul. That's his fourth foul. He equaled his point production. I don't know. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to talk to Coach Barons and maybe. Uh, his scouting report was scouting as report was, as you would like. Was, was very very. You're, He's making you lose some of your credibility, Neil. Well, I don't have any credibility to start with. Cass Thomas has 16 points, and that was one of his one of his focus points. And uh, Lovelace was supposed to be a great slasher, but he has really shown us nothing except two points and a, and a lot of uh, complaining on the court. And now we have to look at Adam Bihar, and he has four points and four fouls. As Shockley puts in two points, two free throws. Now Lovelace tries to show us something else. I've got news for him. He's going against, uh, well, he got a three-pointer there. 
He showed me. He's going against Maurice Allen, who's one of the quickest guys in the league, and Marcus Green and Bihar takes a shot. He got two guards here for Norristown that are just tenacious on defense, and Lovelace just can't seem to get the handle on, on that uh, the picture. As Shockley drives, Ed Moore doesn't time his rebound, and uh, Norristown's starting to squander a couple points away here. As we have an injured player on the court that's Lippincott's down, he's flailing around. That spells trouble for the Chamonix. As Dennis Flynn comes out of the training room and wants to tend, tend to Jeff Lippincott. Although Lippincott only has a handful of uh, points tonight, I think he's got around five. He means a lot in the inside, and, and especially in trying to de defend someone like Ed Moore. And he is flailing about on the floor. It doesn't look like a knee or a leg. It looks like an upper body. I think he might have like, got poked in the uh, rib, like cage. rib yes. Yeah, it looks like a lot of pain. Dennis Flynn going through his normal uh, evaluation process. His first question is, give me one, get, give me your finger and point to where it hurts. And that, he, it's a one finger test. And if you can point exactly to where it hurts, then he can treat you a lot better. His next question is on a scale of one to 10, one being the little pain, littlest pain you've ever felt, 10 being the most pain, what do you rank it? You say five and above, and he'll he'll uh, he'll take a better look at you. Four, five and below, he's almost like strap it up and let's get back on the court. I'll tell you what, in the uh, professional ranks where he spent some time, they really do teach you a lot there. Well, Dennis Flynn is a is a great trainer. I've I've sung his praises before. He's a graduate of Syracuse University, also Temple University Sports Medicine. Uh, he was a trainer for the Philadelphia Stars USFL team. He was a trainer, assistant trainer for the Philadelphia Eagles under Otha Davis. And now he's uh, found his home here at Norristown. But he's always uh, scanning the internet and looking for uh, magazines and journals to find out the latest and uh, newest techniques in sports athletic training. And he's really kept up on his uh, homework and it's turned into a great trainer. And, and the school district is very lucky to have him. Yes, indeed. And he spends numerous, numerous hours after school and probably, probably beyond his contract uh, here at the school. He's here late at night with the practices, uh, and he's tending to everybody's injuries, even some teachers, I know. And, and Lovelace scores another three-pointer. Teachers come down and ask for his medical opinion before they even go to a doctor. As Marcus Green pushes it ahead to Weldon, and Weldon makes it look easy. Well, we're in double digits, and while we were singing the praises of Mr. Flynn, Lippincott did get up and walk off the court under his own power, which was a good sign. He's in the training room now as Bihar is pushing up against Green, and Green's going to be called for the foul. 55-41, Norristown hanging on. Right now they've got a 14-point insulation against this Chamonix team who has shown some signs of life here in the second quarter. Bihar with a couple of buckets and uh, Lovelace with a couple of threes here. That's right. It's 525 left in the fourth quarter, and they're only down by 14 now. It's, they take another three-point attempt. That's Tim Boone, but it goes short. Weldon with the rebound over to Green. Green slows the pace down a little bit. That was embarrassing for Boone. He had a complete wide open look at that uh, three point attempt. Just didn't get enough behind it. He hardly drew net on that one. Didn't even waver. Norristown is, has moved into a uh, a stall type offense. Almost like a four corners here. As Maurice Sound is closest to us, Weldon in the corner. Moore just hanging out by the lane. Moore outside the three point line now. There's Shockley. Nope, he's not going to take a three pointer to Weldon. Weldon going to take three? No. Inside to Allen. Allen with a turnaround. Basket's good. 57 41. I believe Maurice has nine. That's an unofficial total for him. Lovelace with another three point attempt. It's no good. Eddie Moore screams a rebound down in his hands. Good time rebound in the absence of Lippincott is noted on that play right there. Green beats his man and he's going to be fouled. That's number 24, Tim Boone being called on a foul, and now the Redskins are in the bonus. Booney has had a tough time of it of late. He uh, whiffed on that three-point attempt and comes down and hacks away at Marcus Green, who will be on the line right now. That's right. Marcus Green standing at half court, not realizing that he has to take the shot. It's a one-on-one one now. Make it, take it, as they call it. Green shot goes away, and uh, it's... Cass Thomas with the rebound ahead to Lovelace. Lovelace showing us some dazzling moves now, but nothing. As Ed Moore sticks a hand in his face, here's Maurice Allen. No. 
fouled on behind by number 34, Sean Kenzer. I don't think Allen detected his presence back there. As Cass Thomas even shakes Maurice Allen's hand, he's like, that was a good move. Cass and Maurice collide at about the, uh, the foul line. I'll where, tell you, where it's just about where Maurice took off. From. I was going to say, he took off either from the foul line or from that red line that, that cuts through the lane there. He was skying. What's the furthest point away from the basket you ever took off from? Uh, two feet. <laughs> I don't think I could even do that Dr. J thing he used to do where he'd take off from the free throw line one-handed into the basket, and I'd think I'd break my hand, my wrist, my, 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 my hand would fall right into the basket and just stick in the, in the net, but Irving had a, a gift there. Dennis Flynn um, escorting Jeff Lippincott back to his bench with some, probably some ice <laughs> up against his ribs. Does not appear with four minutes left right now that he will be able to play as Dennis Flynn consults with the coaching staff of Neshaminy. Maurice, Maurice Allen. Maurice Allen makes the second one. He missed the first one. 58-41, just around four minutes to play. Maurice joins Ed Moore, Brad Weldon, and Marcus Green in double digits right now. Thomas underneath the basket where the basket is good and he's going to be fouled. It's probably going to be on Ed Moore. Nope, I'm sorry. It's going to be on Brad Weldon. 22nd timeout called by Neshaminy. This opportunity wanted to send a word out to the birdcage here, the refreshment stand run by the N Club. They do a fine job in there for hot dogs and soft pretzels, soda, candy, and gum. Uh, and also a slice of pizza. So if you come on out to these games, you can uh, wet your whistle or uh, feed your... Is that, is that a list of what they offer there or what you, what you had for dinner? Uh, just what they offer there. You can also feed your stomach at the Birdcage, sponsored by the N Club, run by Mr. Santangelo. Visit C.J. Monteleone, one of the workers there, one of the students and the members of the N Club. He'll serve you up a nice hot dog or a piece of pizza. C.J. getting a little plug there from That's his right. good friend, Mr. Schaefer. Well, I had him in class as a freshman, and he's... Uh, He's uh, really matured as a, as a young man and, and a nice guy, and he told me he wanted a plug on uh, NASD TV. And, well, you know, I can oblige at a, at a stage it's, like this where we have a 15-point lead. We like to talk about anything. It's good to see you uh, earned your five bucks from CJ. No, that's free hot dogs for the rest of the season. <laughs> we also want to mention some other people who are key to the uh, Norristown Sports Program. Uh, Marion Venizia is the athletic secretary, and she types up our uh, – our lineups, and uh, she does a fine job with that. Also, athletic director Joe Fabrizio. Uh, some other people who are the support staff, Bud Denner and Roseanne McKeever, who sell tickets. Also, our ticket taker tonight is Candy Johnson. All these people make the athletic program in Norristown uh, run smoothly because they do the behind-the-scenes job as uh, number 24, Tim Boone, gets on the gets in a scoring column with his first two points off a of steal. Well, Booney redeems himself. It wasn't much of a steal. He actually just ended up with the ball in his hand after uh, Marcus Green's errant dribble. Shockley was trying to set up, it looked like, Tulsa for an alley-oop, but the ball went off a redskin, and now the ball will belong to the redskins Moore and Lovelace as Eddie Moore is being attended to uh, by Dennis Flynn on the Eagle sideline now. Dennis working overtime tonight. Inside to Cass Thomas, turn around, good. Guarded there by Tolson. Maurice Allen. The Redskins are putting on a spurt right here at the end. They're on down by 11 as Weldon cherry picking and he gets a basket. Seems like Weldon's had about eight of his points in that similar type situation. Norristown is up by 13 with three minutes left to go. Neshamini's going to look to Lovelace to uh, start squeezing off some threes or maybe Kaz Thomas to take it inside and try to get fouled. Foul's going to be on Tolson. He reached around uh, Lovelace there, or Thomas. He's going to be called on the foul. Substitution here for Nishamini as Bihar takes a seat. He leaves the game right now with four points. Kenzer to take the ball out for the Redskins. Bihar a complete non-factor tonight for Nishamini, and they definitely needed him tonight. Belongs to the Redskins again, having trouble getting the ball inbounds on this tough Norristown defense. There to number 14, the unidentified Redskin. As Lovelace takes a three pointer, it's no good. Rebound, Brad Weldon. Over to Allen. He's got Shockley on a distance. Marcus Green dribbling through three, count them, three defenders. He gets through and he's fouled. 
New Chamonix does its best impression of Norristown with a swarming defense. Swarming full court pressure to try to get back into this game with 2.43 left to go. They're going to have to do everything that they can. Doesn't look like Jeff Lippincott is going to be coming back out on the floor. Still holding his side there as Tim Boone commits a second foul and Adam Bihar comes back in the game. Got a little rest there. Marcus Green to the line. Green with 17 points tonight. And he still has 17, but it looks like there's going to be, I don't know, he was shooting two. He was shooting two. Brad Weldon wanted to get a, a little rebound there. An ambitious job from Brad Weldon. Referee smiles him off and Weldon realizes his mistake. Marcus Green puts up another one. Adds to his total. Bihar would like to just have half those points as he dribbles down the lane. Pretty easy lap, and he adds to his total. Now he has a half dozen points. Shockley here closest to us. Fouled by number 34, Sean Kenzer on the reach. Now the Redskins have committed their 11th foul, and the Eagles will be shooting two shots from now on well, until the end of the game. Coach Simon has seen enough tape in Norristown to know that at this situation, you're really not putting yourself in a bad spot by starting to hack away and using as many fouls as you can against Norristown, who's notorious for not shooting that well from the line. And tonight, they're probably around 50% as Shockley misses the first one of two. So you're definitely uh, lengthening the amount of time that you have to put points on the board by fouling Norristown. He makes the second one. It's now 62-49, a 13-point lead as Bihar puts up a three-point attempt. It's no good. Weldon with the rebound. Allen fouled right away by number 32, Cass Thomas. Another 10 seconds or so off the clock. There's 2.23 left to go. Norristown still holds a commanding 13-point lead, and it's going to be a foul shooting seminar for the remainder of the game. I saw this, I saw this kind of play at our sinus a couple days ago in a women's game where the opposing team would keep fouling our science. If our science would put in one of the two foul shots, then the other team would go back down the court, shoot a two-pointer or a three-pointer, and they'd be up by one or two points in the exchange. But there just wasn't enough time. There's only about 45 seconds left in the game, and this was going on for the whole time, and they just couldn't climb back into the game. As Allen puts in the second one, and now Norristown has a 15-point lead. They're building up the lead instead of cutting away at the, at the lead. Here's Kenzer with a three-pointer. It's no good. Rebound again to Weldon. Weldon ahead to Allen. Looks like it's a, a replay of the last time. Weldon does a nice job there, though, of trying to get rid of the ball before he gets fouled. Foul's going to be on number 14 for the Redskins. This is going to be a quality victory for Norristown if they can hang on. As I mentioned earlier, Nishamini, one of the top probably four teams or so in the Suburban One League. The Redskins, if they continue with what they're doing right now, will drop to seven and four. And Norristown will move to, I believe, nine and one in the Suburban One League. How's your sinus doing this year? Well, your sinus men are, are enjoying some success right now. They have two straight home victories. Uh, but they are probably five and eight overall. And for a change, they're probably doing better than the women. The women are struggling right now. Uh, I believe they're five and nine. And they're experiencing some difficulty on the road. They're doing well at home. They're taking on some tough teams. Most recently, they took on uh, Johns Hopkins, who is the number one ranked team in their region, four, uh, 13th in the nation. And I talked to the coach, Lisa Cornish, and she said, we've taken on the top four teams in our region this year so far. So they're taking on some quality competition, and they're, they're not coming out on the winning side. As Lovelace puts up another three-pointer, it's no good. Tolson with a rebound ahead to Marcus Green. Green going to push it up. Yes, he is. Shockley baseline. He's got it. Ryan Shockley scores the 65th and 66th point for Norristown, and now it's a 17-point lead. I'm seeing a lot of games now, and I'm seeing a lot of uh, basketball, and I'm not saying that I want the end season, this season to end for Norristown, but I'm getting tired of seeing a round ball going through the hoop. Well, Lovelace had the round ball going through the hoop for a brief spell during the third and fourth quarter, but he seems to have lost whatever he found. Timeout called by Coach McGee and the Norristown Eagles as he brings in wholesale substitutions. It'll be Lee Fowler, Ed Martin. Donald Vaughn, Joe Roscoe, and Salim Campbell all coming in, giving the starters a rest. And at that point, we have to start talking about the scoring for the starters. Maurice Allen, 
double figures. Marcus Green double figures. Ed Moore double figures. Brad Weldon double figures. A lot of double figures out there. And now the substitutes with a minute 20 to go will have some time on the floor. Well, that's four guys in, in double-digit scoring, which is very important for this Norristown squad. Uh, they're holding on to a 15-point advantage with a minute 20 left to go in the contest. Looks like they'll be bringing this one home. Uh, as we draw closer to the districts, the guys who will be playing this last minute or so won't have as many opportunities to play as the stakes heighten. That's true, but when you're in foul, when you get a foul trouble situation, you may need to go to someone like Salim Campbell or Lee Fowler. Uh, Lee Fowler, the, the second tallest guy on the team, you may need to go to him to help out in an Ed Moore situation when Ed Moore is uh, in foul trouble. Coach Ed Simon from Chamonix does the exact same uh, thing and puts a, a bunch of his second stringers on the floor. Everyone's trying to limber up and stretch out a little bit. They're By the time they get uh, any type of warm, the game will be over. That's right. There are a lot of JV players out on the court right now for Nishamity as Donald Vaughn controls the ball now for the Eagles. Over it's to Salim Campbell. It's a big thrill for these guys to be out on the floor right now. There's Lee Fowler underneath. He's going to be fouled. It's going to be on Matt Puma, number 33. Especially some of the younger JV guys. Puma's first foul. Lee Fowler will go to the free throw line as Marcus Green heads to the locker room. Not sure what that's all about, but he realizes he's not getting back into the game with a minute to go. And some of our fans are getting ready to go out into the pouring rain, go home, enjoy another Eagle victory. The Eagles will move to 16 and three overall. Losing only to top-ranked Plymouth White Marsh, Council Rock, another fine squad to beat them, and Westchester East. 67-51, the score on the board here at Norristown Area High School. And Nishamini trying three-pointers. Nothing goes for them as Salim Campbell picks the ball up, passes it to Joe Roscoe. Joe puts up a basket, and he gets two points for the night. Joe Roscoe getting in the scoring column for the Eagles. Under 40 seconds to go now as Nishamini is looking for anything to go in the bottom of the basket. Matt Puma with the ball right now. Salim Campbell tries a steal. Joe Roscoe called on the foul. And the Redskins are now shooting one and one. Nishamini really needed this one. The stakes were high. They were trailing Council Rock by one basket or by one game coming into tonight's game. And they did not make up any ground. No they, did, no, they did not. And Matt Puma goes to the line, and he makes the first one. He'll get a second one, and some of the fans are filing out now. The Redskins cheerleader still into the game, though. As Matt Puma puts up his second shot, and he now has four points on the night. Salim Campbell pushes the ball up, takes a three-pointer. It's no good. A rebound to the Redskins, ahead to Puma. Puma guarded by Roscoe, he's got two on one, loses the handle on the ball, Roscoe picks it up. Joe Roscoe dribbling around, 12 seconds to go, ahead to Campbell. Campbell with Martin and Fowler and Vaughn on the court. And they're just gonna let the clock run out. Salim Campbell looking to take the last shot. He takes a big three-pointer, it's no good, and there's the buzzer. Sounding off another victory for the Eagles, 69-53. The Eagles scored 21 points in the last stanza to Nishamini's 18. And John, another victory for the Eagles. We've gone to 16 and three. We're getting very used to this here at home. Uh, Norristown taking on Central Bucks West here next Tuesday, the 27th. Uh, and we know that Central Bucks West is gonna give them a little, a little run for their money. Yeah, they uh, were a big headache last time up at Doylestown. Norristown escaped with a narrow 42 to 40 victory and, and they needed overtime to do that against a West team that relies on outside shooting for its offense. It got Norristown to play its style game and that's why the uh, both teams barely made it into the 40s and that was well to the advantage of Central Bucks West. So Norristown will be uh, struggling to combat that all evening long. West's offense will pass the ball anywhere from 12 to 15 times before they even try to squeeze a shot off. Very patient offense. Much, uh, much different than what you find here at Norristown. That's true. We want to thank once again Andrew Bodos for being our cameraman and Tony Coya for producing tonight. 
NASD TV. We also want to thank Mike Santangelo and the N Club for providing refreshments at halftime. Norristown, another victory, 69-53. Final scoring for Norristown, Marcus Green, 18, Maurice Allen with 12, Eddie Moore, 11, a couple of block shots, Ryan Shockley, 6, TJ Tolson, 6, Brad Weldon, 12. And Cass Thomas led the Redskins with 16 points. Antoine Lovelace turned on a little at the end there with eight points. For John Price, this is Neil Schaefer signing off from Norristown Area High School and NASD-TV production. So long.